Hello and welcome back to another video. We have another pet portrait commission today and it is of this beautiful King Charles Spaniel. Look at the character in this little lady's face. I've actually met this King Charles Spaniel when she was very very young and she's a gorgeous little dog um, and I'm very excited to ink her. Um, the image is good quality, very nice, a little bit dark so I've had to bring it up on my iPad um, and I've done the usual where I've sketched it out using my grid method and I've also taken a photo and overlaid it on my iPad over the original image just to make sure the proportions were right. I did make a few tweaks after I'd done that so it's always worth doing. If you want to hear a bit more about that and a bit more in depth um, just watch a few of my other videos. I do touch on it in multiple multiple videos um but I don't tend to go on it uh, on about it in every video just because uh, it would just be a bit boring um but basically we are going to be just inking this today it's quite a small portrait it was going to be originally the full A5 size however looking at the image and the way that the dog is sat in this image I actually suggested that a nice square portrait of just the head would be perfect which I have done on a few spaniels before and it works out really really nice to do it that way. I will be using my Bortoletti glass dip pen and my Bortoletti black ink for this one and I think there's nothing else to it but to do it so let's get on with it and see how we get on. Welcome for the first time here. I hope you've all had a lovely Easter. I have been struggling to get back into the groove, I will not lie. Um, that is why you are seeing one of my Christmas commissions. I have a few of these just in the folder backups for when I have not had a chance to do a video or something along those lines. So that is why you are seeing this. Um, but sometimes it just takes me a little while to get back into the groove after I've had a little bit of a break. So we will get there soon. It's just very busy at the moment. But excuses aside, I thought I would share this Christmas commission with you. So this is, like I said, the the King Charles Spaniel, that's the one I was trying to think of <laughs> the words. Um, and this Spaniel is a particular favourite of mine recently. I really love the really tight curls I've had to achieve on the ears. So you may have seen me do a lot of Springer Spaniels, which have, they have tight curls, but they have a little bit more of a looseness to them. Whereas this King Charles Spaniel, because they have such small ears, they are exceptionally tight. So as you can see there, you really do have to play to the lights and darks in the reference image and therefore I tend to, which you're seeing me do here, is actually outline where I'm going to be doing those curls and then I try and leave as much white as possible with, whilst also adding those lines to create the fur texture in the areas where the light is hitting and then I really try and saturate the dark areas whilst also leaving a few little white touches to show that it is fur and it's not just a, an intense area of black and that's how I always achieve my tight curls. Um, so this bit in particular you will see there I've kind of left those whiter areas there that I'm going to highlight in a moment and then I'm just doing these darker areas. Um, and also changing up the directions, really pay attention to the directions of your curls. This is why I say the importance of having um, of having a good reference photo. If you have a blurry reference photo, seeing these curls can be exceedingly difficult. So always make sure you have a decent reference photo. I do try and push for a better one from the client. So I just urge you to do the same if you are going down that route. Um, but yes, that's how I tend to do these tight curls and I think it works pretty well. I think the finished products, which you'll see very shortly, um, kind of, you can see all the curls, you can see the lights and darks and you can see the depth of the ear, where it's curving, where it's being shadowed by the face and where the long strands of fur merge into those tighter curls.
section I have a drastic change from darker fur to lighter fur and like I have mentioned in previous videos when I'm doing those lighter fur areas I am merely just adding a few lines in the direction of the fur to show that there is fur there but to not overcrowd crowd it and, and kind of just it's almost just a little hint at fur and you've still retained that white look to it and it's not going to be looking like a darker coloured fur and that's how I tend to do my darks and lights if a, if a, if a dog has a tan colour on it in the darker areas I will treat it almost like black and in the lighter areas I will treat it like a light white colour um, and that's how I try and decipher the colours of the fur. Um, and then onto the nose, I find the noses can be easy or hard depending on the shape. These small ones can, to, can tend to be a bit harder because I'm trying to curve around so many edges. Um, but other than that, it has been a really pleasurable dog to ink and a really sweet face to ink. So I've really enjoyed that. And I hope you've enjoyed watching too and hearing a few of my hints. I know I say this in every video, but if there is anything in particular you'd like to know about when I'm doing my inkings, please let me know because I have plenty of inking videos built up. So thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.